let's start with this. The Paradox Grand Strategy games are intimidating. Those games, including the Kill Your Family Members to Seize Power simulator, the Ally Yourself with Everyone Against France and Still Lose simulator, and the Gandalf simulator... Wait, is this accurate? I'm being told that doesn't count. Anyway, it's been said that these games require several hours of watching YouTube tutorials or intense study of the wiki before you can play them. This may have been true in the past, but the most recent of these games has made large strides towards a more intuitive interface and explaining the game system better via tooltips. However, the larger gains in playability have been through eliminating systems with tedious micromanagement and focusing on systems which generate interesting decisions for the player. All this means that you, dear viewer, do not need to feel intimidated. Hearts of Iron 4 is presented in an intuitive way, with systems that provide you with clear choices. And, in my opinion, it does all this without sacrificing the incredible depth that we've come to expect from a Paradox Grand Strategy game. Okay, with that out of the way, let's jump into it. Hearts of Iron 4 is, like its predecessors, a grand strategy game set during the period of World War II. Specifically, it starts in 1936 and extends to 1948. It's a pausable real-time game, which means you can treat it like a turn-based game if you should choose, pausing whenever you feel like you need to think about a decision. You can also treat it more like a real-time game, with the clock always ticking to simulate the time pressure that the leaders of the historical nations must have felt. There are, of course, several speeds to choose from, which means you get to play the game the way that you want. You play as the supreme ruler of any country in the world during this time period. You have, essentially, absolute power over the army, navy, air force, and economy of that country. You then use diplomacy and military to achieve your goals. Which raises a very important question. What are your goals? What are the victory conditions? There's unfortunately no straightforward answer. Unlike a traditional strategy game, most of the historical paradox games are designed as a sandbox. There is ostensibly a stated goal of getting the highest score by the end date. Within the context of Hearts of Iron 4, your score will likely depend on several factors, including your military and economic strength, the success of your chosen faction, and the number of victory points you control at the end of the game. Europa Universalis 4 recently added a high score system with a leaderboard, and it's likely that Hearts of Iron 4 will also have this at some point, if not at launch. That means that some players might be playing Iron Man specifically to get the highest score as a specific country. However, as we mentioned earlier, Hearts of Iron 4 is at its heart a sandbox game. Many people will come up with their own personal victory conditions and play for those. Some, for example, have stated they wanted to play as Poland and try to survive. Uh, others have stated uh, that they want to turn France communist and take over England. There will also be a host of achievements that are essentially a challenge mode for the game. Can you, as Russia, get... 600 provinces belonging to communist countries before the end of the game. Uh, can you, as Italy, reform the Roman Empire by controlling all the coasts of the Mediterranean? Uh, other Paradox titles have had plenty of these challenges built into the achievement system, guaranteeing a ton of replayability beyond the simple high-score system. And then, of course, there's multiplayer. The game has been developed with a robust multiplayer system. It's likely that multiplayer communities will come up with their own goals and victory conditions for how you, you play a game of three versus three or two versus two versus two, for example. These kinds of games will likely end with players surrendering one at a time until only one faction remains standing and is declared the winner, much like uh, the early version of the board game Risk. Seriously, has anyone ever actually played that game to its conclusion? I'm not beaten yet. I still have armies in the Ukraine. <laughs> the Ukraine. You know what the Ukraine is? It's a sitting duck. A road apple, Newman. The Ukraine is weak. It's feeble. I think it's time to put the hurt on the Ukraine. I come from Ukraine. You not say Ukraine weak. Yeah, well, we're playing a game here, pal. Ukraine is came to you. How about I take your little bonus? <laughs> All of this just means that you are responsible for deciding how you want to play. You can play challenge mode and try to get one of the more difficult achievements. You can play for a high score as a specific country, aiming to beat either your personal best or get up there on the leaderboard and beat everyone else. You can also attempt to achieve the historical goals of the nation that you're playing or make up your own. It's your choice. 
Now all this information is fairly basic, and if you are still new to Hearts of Iron 4, jump into the next episode. We'll go into some more detail about how the game actually plays. If you want to thoroughly examine and learn the game before it's released, check out the more advanced guide here. I'm also planning to stream Hearts of Iron 4 on launch day for any of you that might be on the fence. I'll show you around the game and you can see exactly how it plays with some commentary and narration, and we'll of course take questions. Lastly, for those interested in Stellaris, another Paradox Grand Strategy game coming out on May 9th, I'll be streaming it on launch day. Check it out here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the bunker.